This morning we look at the Word of God on the topic Evolve. Evolve. Let's pray. Gracious God, loving Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are our God. I thank you for the guidance of your mighty miracle sustaining Holy Spirit. And I ask you now to grant me clarity as we look into your word this morning, for I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to look at Romans 14 verse 1, and I read to you just a snippet of it from the message translation. It says, Welcome with open eyes who don't see things the way you do. Welcome with open arms, people who don't see things the way you do. And so you can understand that the subtext of the topic is dealing with disagreements and being able by God's grace to change. A simple definition of the word evolve is to develop gradually by a process of growth to make someone or something change or develop often for the better. To make someone or something change or develop often, mostly for the better. In 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 26 talking about Samuel, it says, now the boy was growing in stature and in favor with the Lord and with people. And I, as two, we read these words talking about change and the call to develop and mature. Isaiah 54 verse 2 says, enlarge, enlarge the place of your tent, stretch out the curtains of your dwellings, Spare not, lengthen your cord for stakes. Yes, it's a call on all of us to stretch and to grow and to mature. And then Jeremiah 17 verses, Blessed is the man or the woman who trusts in God and does not fear. Blessed is the man, blessed is the woman that stands his or her roots by a stream who will not fear when the heat or the pressure comes and will not be anxious nor cease to yield fruit. Is her leaves if she, he does not fear change will be green. Question that have baffled late persons alike for millennia. According to psychology, uh, change has two parts of our makeup. Uh, what has one, the id, id, and two, the ego. The id, uh, to do with our identity, our individuality. It's that impressionable part of our psyche and being. And then you got the ego. Uh, now, the, 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 where the id deals with our individuality, who we are in our essence, the ego is that superimposed structure which seeks to protect the id that impressionable, delicate part of us. So generally speaking, help us, Holy Ghost, uh, the ego rises up to keep us from changing. It's a defensive mechanism. Uh, it, it's that mechanism that comes in place when we are or we are caught up in a di disagreement. This up to protect. And even though it has its place in justifiable situations, the ego is the thing rising up 
from changing. It keeps us from changing. And so every instance where we are caught in a situation where we feel righteous indignation to defend ourselves, oh, it's a call right there to check ourselves and ask ourselves, oh, Holy Ghost, God Almighty, what are you trying to teach me right here in this moment where I am seeking to defend myself and change? Now, this is a call also for unity. It is not uniformity. And I say this because, yes, God has created us with individuality and he respects our individuality. And we should in turn respect the individuality of others. He wants his followers to be united. It doesn't mean that he wants us all to be alike. No, God believes in variety. He believes in differences of opinion. He had wanted that for all of us to be in lockstep. Matons or robots, he would have created us all the same. But you know, he did not do that. Again, God loves variety. There is no other person you and God meant for it to be that way so we should respect the differences that we find in others take we must never therefore let differences in the workplace in the family church divide us we should celebrate this celebrate those differences stay in focus on what matters most what matters most is learning what God wants us to become in our areas and in our experiences of conflict. We should celebrate this rather than seeking to snuff them out or muffle them or disregard them or dismiss, dismiss them. We should celebrate differences in others while staying focused on the learning that God is challenging us to accept. But what about all those differences in church members or uh, employees or in the workplace, you ask? Those differences that annoy us, that get under our skin, that test our best nerve. How can, how can you be unified with someone? How can you be on the same page with someone who irritates you to no end? As I turn my attention to Amos chapter 3 verse 3, reminds us in a question, how can two except they be agreed? How can two see eye to eye? where there is no agreement. And so in our differences, yes, by God's grace, how can you be united with someone who gets under your skin and tests your faith? Well, again, I refer to Romans 14, verse amplified version. It says, welcome with open arms, people and fellow believers who don't see the things And don't jump all over them every time they do or say something you don't agree with. Even when it seems that they are in their opinions, even when it seems that they are wrong, even when it seems that they are weak in the faith department, even when they seem, it seems that they are misrepresenting the truth. Again, don't jump. Remember, they too have their own story. They too have their own history to deal with. Therefore, treat them gently. In church, in the workplace, in family, the this morning is to be quick to listen, to evolve, to be slow to anger when you have a disagreement. 
Be slow to anger when you have a conflict. Anger in the midst of hostile fire. Be slow to anger in a hostile environment. Most people tend to look at how far a person has to go rather than recognizing how far they have already come. Celebrate a person's difference. Celebrate their story and their glory. If you knew how much someone had already overcome in life, you'd probably be rejoicing with them instead of criticizing them for where they are now. When you have conflict with someone whose background you don't know or understand, don't dismiss them or judge them harshly for behavior that you don't understand or come. Stop thinking, what is this person? Instead, I invite you to ask the question, what happened? to them what happened to them why are they this way and when we seek to walk in another person's shoes we get a better appreciation for what makes them who they are in life so someone's behavior might be shaped by a crisis respect that hurt people hurt people Again, let me hurt people, hurt people. When you find someone who's hurting other people, deep, 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 deep beneath the surface, you'll find likely that they have also been hurt. The people that you think deserve your kindness the least are those your kindness the most. They need great doses of love, affection, and mercy. To achieve unity, I counsel us, myself and yourself, to offer empathy, empathy and compassion instead of criticism. When you affirm someone's worth and the story God is writing through their life for your benefit, for your learning, you don't just change that one person's life. You change yourself. You transform by extension environment. You transform your family. You transform your church. You transform the community and by God's grace, by his power, you transform the world. And so the call today, in a positive sense, using the word evolve, is to grow and mature and deal with conflict, deal with disagreements, deal with various opinions, deal with differences of personality in a way that respects individuals and bring honor and glory to God. Yes, ask God through the Holy Ghost to keep that ego in check. And when God brings that ego under control, guess what? His power works on the id, the individual that you are to make you what you ought to be for God's purpose in transforming the world, expanding and getting people ready eternity. May God bless us real good and keep us in the hollow of his hand. And may we get out of the driver's seat and let him take control, take over our vessel, drive our vehicles the glory having absolute control over our intentions over our actions over our every wish and desire this is my prayer 
for all of God's people to resolve to evolve in Christ's name let's pray gracious God loving Heavenly Father I thank you I praise you that you are the ever-present Emmanuel Holy Spirit miracle working and you can transform us to make us what we ought to be by the renewing of our minds to bring every thought and every wish and every desire under your subjection for your glory to make us what we ought to be and so i say in benediction the lord bless you and keep you and be gracious unto you the lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace when he comes or calls by his transforming power save both you and your for we ask it believing oh god you're able to do it in the name of father son and holy spirit and holy ghost but he said amen and amen again